Welcome, welcome, welcome uh, everybody who is watching. It's been fun to kind of watch this chat and see where you guys are coming from and where you're watching from. Continue to let us know in the chat, but uh, I just want to say welcome. Welcome to the next installment of The Road to Salt. Many of you may be new to Salt. Many of you may have been a part of Salt ever since we kicked off our first gathering in 2013. And so I thought, hey, as we get started this today, it would be a good idea to kind of share the heartbeat of Salt or kind of what this name means. My dad asked me years ago, uh, does Salt stand for Sound and Light Team? And of course I laughed because I was like, oh my gosh, I am so glad that SALT is not an acronym for some really cheesy phrase that represents our community. You know, SALT is actually a picture. It's a picture of the role that we believe that creativity and technology should play in the local church. Because if you think about it, SALT has no nutritional value in and of itself. You go out to a restaurant and order a really nice steak, you're ordering a nice piece of meat or something and it may be delicious, but it's delicious because of the seasonings that are added to it. If you went to that place and the chef never added salt, it'd be very bland and probably taste very dry and, and not full of flavor. But if they put just the right amount of salt on it, it would have enhanced the natural flavor of that and it'd be like perfect, right? That'd be the perfect steak, but too much salt and now it becomes bitter. That is the exact idea that we believe God has given us as creatives, as technicians in the church and the role that creativity and technology plays and our services. We don't need technology to necessarily present the gospel, but we feel like that that can be that little pinch of salt that we add to the gospel so it can enhance that flavor and become palpable to the people that we have been called to reach in our community. So because you are here, part of that, we believe that you're part of our salt community. We're going to say that a lot because salt is a community. It's not a gathering or an event or just this webinar. And what that also means is because it's a picture, there is no sort of like, oh, we finally achieved the perfect amount of salt, right? I mean, if we had done that, then nobody else would be trying to perfect the steak, right? I mean, that, so many of you are probably still trying to perfect that steak. And so that means that it's a journey. It is a, it's a road that we're all going to be on. A, 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 it's not about a destination, but sort of the path that we're taking to figure out for our community, what is that right amount of salt? What's that right amount of creativity? And so this whole phrase, road to salt, uh, maybe new to you, but that's really kind of this idea that like we're all on this road to figuring this out together. And so we're just joining with you as you're figuring this out, no matter how long you've been in ministry. And we want to just pour into your world free resources, free training and say, hey, we're all in this journey together. Let's try and help spur each other along a little bit further. And so I'm so excited and glad that you came today. Uh, in the chat, I want, to, I want to do this real quick. If you can, just go ahead and share Real quick, uh, how long have you been serving in ministry? Some of you may have been serving in ministry for years. If you came to the original 2013 SALT conference, I'd love to know if you're uh, still with us today. Um, some of you may have only been serving for a couple of days. And if that's the case, we want to celebrate you and champion you on as you kind of start your road to SALT, road to figuring out what that balance of creativity. Look at that, Michael, 10 years, 25. This is incredible. Uh, some of you guys who are sharing some of these come in. So continue to share how long you guys have been apart. I'm super, super excited. Each and every one of you are here. Today, we're going to get a chance to learn a little bit about live stream. We're going to learn why live streaming is important. We're going to learn about some of the basic building blocks uh, and then some of the ways that we can prevent issues or headaches or hiccups that may happen in our live stream. And so I'm very, very excited for you to hear from our guest today, Frank Ramirez. But before I do that, uh, we were actually introduced to Frank through some other friends, friends of the SALT community. And so I want to make sure that you all get a chance to connect with that person who brought us on. So if we can go ahead and invite Noah from Hunt's photo and video. They were with us last year at SALT Conference, and they said, hey, we've got this incredible guy we want you to meet. So, Hunt, are you there with us? So, sure. Noah, I'm going to kind of let you take this for a second. Would you yeah, just for sure. let us know a little bit about who you are, who Hunt's is, and um, then I may twist your arm to say uh, maybe you can hook our community up with some discounts and deals, because who in the church doesn't love 
a good discount, right? For sure. Yeah, everybody loves a good discount. So, um, well, thank you for being here, everyone. Uh, my name is Noah Buchanan. Uh, I'm coming from Maine uh, from Hunt's Photo and Video. Uh, if any of you were at the uh, 2021 SALT Conference, uh, Gary and I were there. You may have met us there. We were upstairs next to the Sigma booth. Um, so if any of you there uh, came and met us, uh, awesome to see you again. Really excited to be back on. Uh, if any of you aren't familiar with Hunt's, though, um, we are a New England-based photo and video retail company, uh, but we work with groups and organizations and customers all over the entire country. Uh, that's actually kind of my main duty is doing outside sales. Uh, and that involves a lot of trade shows and events and conferences, just like SALT. Uh, so really excited to be on here with all of you today. Uh, we have an awesome presentation lined up with Frank Ramirez from Sigma, um, and I'm really looking forward to it. Um, Hunts, really, we are all about customer relationships, um, building long-term customer relationships with everybody that we work with. We're not just in it for a one-time sale. We really wanna be able to help you out time and time again, any way that we can, whether you're looking for new gear or equipment, you have any technical questions, whatever it may be, uh, we want to be here as a resource for all of you um, outside of just a retailer. So that's really what's most important to us uh, and building a community. Um, just like Salt has built their own community, uh, we want to build our own community around Hunts as well and all of our customers and photographers and videographers and just other creatives that we work with. So really excited to be on here today with all of you. Um, and we got some awesome stuff going on. Um, which I will talk about in just a minute. But uh, can you hear me on your end now? You got me coming through? I can, yeah. Awesome, I can hear awesome. you loud and clear. Uh, was, that's exciting. It was cool to have you and Gary with us last year. And then when this whole idea of, hey, we have this road to salt and all this extra content, you guys are like, oh my gosh, we got to help you guys out and, and bring Frank in. So, <laughs> but before we introduce Frank, uh, as I kind of joked, I kind of want to ask that question of like, I mean, if you think about it, churches are always needing a discount because they say to their pastor, hey, I need this much money to pull this project off. And the pastor, for some reason, comes up with some number that's a lot less than what we actually need to pull the project off. So how can you all help yeah, uh, us yeah. get gear at a better price? For sure. Yeah. I mean, so with today's um, webinar, the Road to Salt webinar, uh, we got some awesome promotions uh, in combination with Sigma and some of the products that we'll, Frank will be discussing today in his webinar uh, and we also have some other specials that may go along with that as well, some other accessories and some other gear that you may need to go along with your live streaming. So uh, there will be a handout that will be put here into the webinar. So that will have my contact information uh, along with all the specials and promotions that we are running today in combination with this webinar. And I will also put my link or my email down in the chat for all of you. So if you do have any questions uh, outside of any of those specials or promotions that we are running, uh, please do reach out to me via email anytime. That's always the best way to get in touch with me. And I will be more than happy to assist any of you with anything that you may need, uh, whether it's something that's listed on that sheet or something else completely unrelated to that whatsoever. Um, we are here to assist in any way that we can. I love it. That's killer, Noah. Thanks for doing that for our community and, and supporting us that way. So why don't you go ahead and take the honors of giving us a little bit of a preview of Frank and what he does, where he is at, and uh, kind of what he's going to be For talking sure. About. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I actually met uh, Frank uh, not that long ago. I actually, the first time I met Frank in person was actually at the SALT conference last year. Uh, but since then, we've stayed in touch and um, have been good friends since. Uh, Frank is an expert cinematographer. Uh, he knows all the ins and outs of all the cine stuff. Uh, and is going to be talking all about live streaming today uh, with usage of Sigma lenses and some Sigma products that they carry. And we'll probably be mentioning some other accessories as well. But uh, Frank's actually tuning in from the West Coast uh, out in California. I forget exactly. I believe in the L.A. area he is tuning in from. Um, outside of cinematography, Frank's also an amazing photographer himself and does some awesome film photography, uh, which I definitely really love and admire myself because I'm also a very passionate photographer and love film photography too. So uh, Frank is just a great guy and an expert when it comes to cinema side of things, especially all of the amazing cinema gear that Sigma has in their lineup. So uh, he is with the Sigma Cinema Division which is a separate part of the Sigma photo division. So some of you may be familiar with Sigma uh, and their photo lenses that they make for DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Uh, but outside of that, they also have cinema specific lenses for higher end jobs, uh, for higher end production as well, uh, which is what Frank is involved with and what he is a part of over at Sigma. So. We are in luck today. We have a true expert coming on to share all this great information with us. 
Uh, and I'll let Frank say a little bit more about himself and introduce himself a little bit more. But uh, yeah, just really excited to have him on with us today. Uh, and I'm looking forward to a great presentation. I love it. I can't wait. Uh, and Frank, before I, I let you take it away, um, thank you, Noah, for being a part of this and, and helping partner with us to kind of bring Frank in. So really appreciate uh, what you guys are doing. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Hey, real quick, what I'm going to say to everybody out there is remember this is live. And so what I'd love for you to do is as Frank is sharing things, I'd love for you to put questions in the, the chat. Our team is going to be taking those and putting those into Q&A so that we can do a live Q&A uh, afterwards and answer some of those specific questions. We'd also love to just know we don't want you to just sit and watch. We want you to engage. Give us the quotes or the lines or the insights that he's sharing that uh, may mean a lot. Or if he shares something and you affirm that, just let us know, or maybe your team or your church is doing something or has tried some of the techniques or happened to uh, solve some of the hiccups that he's going to talk about maybe. Uh, let us know. I just want to hear from you guys. Engage your best you can. So without further ado, I am going to pass that over to Frank. Frank, take it away. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I am Frank Ramirez. I'm the Senior Account Specialist here at Sigma Corporation of America. We are very excited to be a part of the Road to Salt webinar series. Today, I'm going to give you an introduction to live streaming and broadcasting. I've been a part of live streaming for the past seven years. I've worked on so many exciting sets from Christian talk shows, musical performances, and full on professional sports series. I'm really excited to share my experience with you and help you get your bearings as you begin your live streaming journey. Today we're going to cover a few things. We're going to cover what live streaming is, benefits of live streaming, what gear I would recommend for your productions, some configurations and layouts for a live stream production, some troubleshooting tips, and actually setting up a simple one camera production. Now I'm sure some of you already know what live streaming is, but for those of you who don't, essentially it is the real time capture and transmission of a live event or performance over the internet. So essentially capturing something real time, transmitting that to some sort of outlet such as YouTube, Twitch, Facebook. It's a really efficient way of capturing something and then making it available for many people to see instantaneously. Now that brings us to the pros of live streaming. The first of which is reach and engagement. A live stream production has the ability to reach many more people than what you might have in your immediate vicinity. You can reach people from across the nation or entirely new continents. You can also engage with them in real time, improving the relationship that you can build with your audience. Second, it's suitable and scalable for practically every situation. You can start off with a simple one camera production and then as your needs progress and then you want to reach more and more people, you can then scale it up to be a multi-camera, multi-faceted production. That is incredibly crucial for increasing your bandwidth and the amount of people that you reach and engage with. It's also incredibly efficient. By the end of your production, you will have something that is already cut, mixed, and mastered and ready for release on multiple social media channels and then also help foster engagement with a bigger community or the community you already have. Essentially, it's just another way for you to engage with your audience and build that relationship. Next, let's go over a few pieces of gear that you might need for your production. Depending on your production, some of this might change a little bit, but essentially these are the core things that I think every production should have or at least should think about having. Let's start with the camera department. First thing is obviously a camera followed by a tripod, batteries, memory cards, and some sort of video, video connection cabling like HDMI or SDI cables, something to connect your camera to a switcher that we'll talk about in a second. Let's move on to the production department. If your production requires having multiple cameras, then you might need a switcher to help manage those video inputs. You're also going to need external monitors, laptops, stuff like that to be able to monitor what you are recording. You're also gonna need XLR for audio connections from microphones from another external audio switcher, whatever you need to get audio into that switching device. There's also the possibility of needing walkie talkies if you're more than just a one person running gun production. Now let's go into the engineering department. The engineering department is pretty much where everything gets done. This is where the essential cables really kind of come together. All the tech, everything that really makes the production run comes from the engineering department. 
cables such as HDMI, SDI, XLR, Ethernet cables, all those things are essential for making sure that the production runs smoothly, that everything is connected properly, and everything goes as planned. Having things like converters to go in between cameras or audio inputs is very essential. Sometimes production switchers don't always communicate with cameras, so you gotta make sure you have your bases covered there. Power is also very important. Making sure that cameras are powered, other converters are powered, everything that is essential for the production to run needs to have power either in the form of batteries or extension cords run to that to make sure that they don't turn off midway through the production. I've been there, it's really a hassle to get everything going back on track. You wanna just prevent that and make your life so much easier by having things already set up and available. And the engineering department is really where you gotta focus on to make sure that happens. The next section is the streaming department or just the basic production department as well. But this is more specialized in focusing on making sure the stream is re ready and healthy for the production to commence. The first one is having access to your production site, making sure you know where exactly you're going to be, where your cameras are gonna be positioned, where you can get your hardline ethernet connection, or if there's a Wi-Fi password that you need, all of that comes together and coalesces into the main heart of the stream itself. Second is your stream keys, or essentially where you're going to be streaming to. Now that could be Facebook, that could be YouTube, and each of them have their own specific process for making sure that you can get your stream up to those places. You might need a stream key, a custom RTMP server URL that you have to string or copy from that platform into your streaming software to make sure that they connect and are operating as they should be for the production to continue. So now that I've talked a little bit about what gear I would recommend you having, Let's dive into what I have on a typical run and gun, one person gorilla style live broadcast production. Hi everyone, this is my introduction to what I carry for a run and gun, simple, fast paced live stream. Um, it's pretty much everything I carry in my kit and this is my kit as a whole. Uh, I carry pretty much everything in this Peak Design travel 45 liter bag. It's a really robust bag. I really like it. it. Carries everything that I need and I can take this pretty much anywhere. I keep this around and I probably will continue to use this bag for the foreseeable future. It's just my go-to everyday bag. In my bag, the first thing that I have is a laptop. This is my main tool for doing live streams aside from the camera. It, this is the ProArt Asus laptop. It is super strong, has a lot of hardware in here that makes production really easy, any kind of content creation really. I can edit videos, I can make graphics, and host an entire live stream from just this laptop. So it's really nice and robust. Again, it's also really strong. I can take this pretty much everywhere and not have to worry about it breaking at any point. It's just so good. It has a lot of also really nice ports in here. It has HDMIs, has um, SD cards, Ethernet ports, which are super important if you're doing live stream work because for the most part, you wanna make sure that you have a wired connection, not a wireless connection, because a wired connection is just gonna provide you more reliability for the live stream itself. Moving on to what's inside of my backpack, you open this up and see there's a bunch of room in here for different kinds of gear. Here I have a couple of different things. I have the Sigma FP, uh, I have two of them actually, because they're so small, I can throw quite a bunch of them in here. Right now I only have two, but I could load this thing up with quite a few of them if I wanted to have multiple cameras in different angles for whatever reason, I have the option to do that with this bag and this camera setup. I have in this pocket a 24 to 70. This is a 2.8 full frame art series lens. This is a stills oriented lens, has autofocus, has uh, a zoom capability, which is really nice. I think 24 to 70 is just a really good overall range for doing any kind of work. Um, so I have one of these in my bag at all times. It's just great quality, super sharp, clear, clean, and everything is gonna look great coming out of this lens. In this pocket, I have the new 16 to 28 lens. This is one of the newest lenses that we've made. Um, I really like the range on this. I think 16 is wide enough for most things without getting too fisheye looking. It is really nice. There's no distortion on this end and it's perfect for grabbing any master shots that you might need during the production. If you're gonna have one camera in the center of the array of cameras that you might have, this is perfect for capturing the master shot, 
just the perfect lens in general. And if I need to, I can zoom in to 28, which is again, pretty wide still. So it depends on what situation you're in, but this lens can cover pretty much all of that. Here I have a 50 T 1.5. This is a cine style lens. You can tell it's super robust. It's all metal design. It goes down to T 1.5, so it gives you a really nice shallow depth of field which is perfect for interviews or any kind of really isolating shots you might need for your production or if you're going to do stuff and grab interviews before your live stream even commences so that you have those ready to go to play during the live stream itself you can do it with this lens i love it a lot it probably won't ever leave my kit just because of how useful it is um, and i just like having the cine version because if i'm doing those interviews i can dial in focus very very precisely and again, gonna last me a long time because of how robust this lens is. I can take this and shoot with this for years and years and I'll have to worry about replacing it. Here in this little pocket, as an aside, we have a GoPro Hero Max. This is a 360 camera, but I use it more as just a regular GoPro. Um, I use this for any small or weird, unique sort of angles that I wanna capture. Don't always use this, but it's nice to have it in my bag just as a backup or just in case I want to like add a little bit of flair to my production, I have this with me. So in here in the top spot, I have my tech bag by Peak Design. I really like this bag because it's so small and compact, but then it accordions out to hold just a huge bunch of stuff. Um, and all these little bits and pieces go together. And these are the things that really make the production work. Without this, I probably would be lost. Um, it's not completely organized because I kind of throw things in and pull things out as I need them. But for the most part, it's just a bunch of different cables like HDMIs, um, USB-Cs, which I use to charge the Sigma FP cameras. If I don't have an outlet, I can use these and plug this into an external battery pack and that can power the camera for a while. Um, if I don't also have a bunch of different batteries to swap in and out when I need them. I also have SD cards. I use these along with stuff like SSD drives to record things internally or have redundancies because sometimes things fail, memory cards fail or laptops fail, things don't get recorded properly. And as many backups as you can have, just covers yourself to make sure you don't run into any headaches later on if you're gonna be posting it somewhere else aside from where you streamed it, or you're gonna be cutting those things up and making social media posts with them and having the highest quality possible is really important then this is really nice to have. For audio, I have these little mic go, like Rode mic goes. They're really small and compact. The batteries last for hours. So they're really useful to have if you're gonna be only micing up one person or double, or if you just need something nice and small. Uh, if you have more audio needs, you can have an external recorder with some kind of shotgun mic or handheld mic, depending on what you need for your situation. Those are options, but I like these because you can just run and go with these, plug this into your camera and get really nice sounding audio with them. My last essential is a multi-tool of some sort. I carry one of these around everywhere I go. They're just so useful. These have a bunch of hex keys, a bunch of screwdrivers, um, all kinds of things that you need if you're gonna be maneuvering things around or kind of swapping tripod stuff or I don't know, they're just super useful to have. I have one of these all the time. If not one of these, I also have a Leatherman with knives, pliers, little things like that. But for small things, I kind of just carry this and I don't need anything else, but it's super essential to have. Cannot do a live production without them, I promise you. Moving on to the outside of my bag, I have a power strip. And now, as unfancy as this looks, it's crucial for production. You have to have power no matter what. Um, and just having options to be able to plug in is crucial. Having stuff like a USB port in it, having multiple places to put in different inputs like your laptop, your camera, your external monitors, whatever you need, you have to have your bases covered. So having one of these or multiple of these is essential. Cannot do another production without these either. Alongside that, I also carry around a extension cord um, maybe you're out of reach, you're too far from a wall, whatever the reason is, just nice to have one of these or again, multiple of these. And last but not least, I have a Peak Design travel tripod. This is a photo tripod, but for certain things 
um, and simple shoots. I don't really need to have a full on video tripod with a fluid head, which is a lot heavier. I can just use something like this that's gonna be stationary, not gonna move, pan or tilt. This is just gonna be a simple setup. I like it that it's light, it's compact, it's again really sturdy so I can put on a heavy camera on here and have no worry that it's going to fall over. If I'm going to be doing any more intense production work, if I know I'm going to be doing any more like heavy duty production work or if I have the luxury of time which you don't always have when you're doing live broadcast work, I might take a few other things with me but as a core kit this is something that doesn't change. Um, I might swap small pieces here and there but for the most part Nothing here is something that I can swap out. It's all pretty essential. Um, and this is what I take with me anytime I'm doing any small, simple running gun live stream work. So moving on from gear to gear, we have the Sigma FP and why I like it for live streaming. The Sigma FP is a great small little camera that is just packed full of different features. It is able to shoot 4K as a full frame sensor. It has a dual base ISO of 100 and 3200, which is great for different variations in lighting in your productions. You can be in a dark hall or you can be outside covering a cool music performance. Also has a large heat sink for continuous recording and to make sure that if you're gonna be shooting in an environment that is warm, it's not going to overheat on you has robust ceiling so again the environments that you're going to be in can be greatly varied and you don't have to worry about your gear breaking down it also has the ability to output through usb-c and hdmi if you can be versatile that is such a big plus for any kind of live production and you want to have multiple variations so that you can have backup plans in case something happens or something fails and having the ability to record through usb-c or through hdmi is just a huge plus let's go over a few simple live stream configurations or setups the first one is the one camera setup now this is a simple and efficient and very cost effective way to get a stream done you can cover simple services banquets interviews anything with little to no movement it's also perfect for running gun shooters. If you're a very small team and you don't have a lot of help with you, a one camera setup is perfect for your production. The three camera setup is super classic and effective. It creates an immersive experience for your viewers and can cover everything from sitcoms to concert performances. Here we have a typical live stream layout. Now I say typical, but it is one of the most important and one of the most classic layouts for a live stream, so it's a very important one to know. Here we have the subject up on top in the center. We have the green camera icons there. We have three of them from left to right. You'll have camera one, two in the center, and three on the right. Behind, we have video village. We wanna be unobstructive, and we wanna make sure that we're out of the way for the audience to get a full experience of what they're watching. We're just in the background, pretty much, while still getting as many angles of the production as we can. Now this is a very oversimplified diagram of what a live stream workflow would be. You would have your production captured by a camera, transmitted to a switcher to your computer or some kind of streaming software that would then broadcast to multiple different outlets. You can have one outlet being YouTube, another being Facebook, another one being another custom RTMP server of some kind. You have so many different outlets for where you can send your production. That makes it very useful for organizations, for small companies that really wanna get as much exposure on what they are covering. Before we get into production itself, I wanted to get into data management. Now this is incredibly important to stay organized during the production because you want to stay as efficient as possible. There's really no time to waste and trying to look around for files is literally killing time. So here we have a basic bifolder structure. We have audio which holds our music overlays, voice announcements, any kind of musical accompaniment that we might want. We have graphics for lower third titles, banners, logos. We have project files. This is pretty much a host folder for any files related to the stream, whether it's a file from a video document that you made, a graphics document you made, anything that you might need a hold of, that's pretty much where it will live. We have stream recordings, that's just gonna be a folder to hold our high quality stream copies, um, anything that, we that comes directly from the stream itself. Lastly, we have a video files folder, and that'll hold commercial videos, 
pre-recorded content or interviews. Your needs might be different, but I think this is a good foundation on which you should base your data management. You can customize this as you need, but really having some kind of structure is very important to make sure that you're as efficient as possible and you don't lose anything while you're in production. For my tutorial today, I wanna to focus on OBS. OBS is a nice little streaming software that you can use for free and it can be scaled up to use one camera or if you have a switcher, it can be inputted through there as well. So this is just a quick guide on how to connect to the server that you might be using. First, you wanna open up your settings, go to your stream tab, go to your server, input the server that you're going to be using. And if you have a stream key, you can input that as well. And once everything is connected, you can then hit apply and then you're ready to go to start your stream. So let's go over a few tips for a successful live stream. The main one, of course, is being prepared. You have to know your equipment backwards, forwards, upside down, and reverse. You should know your setup, the show itself, and where you're going to be streaming to. You have to test your equipment, test your streaming and internet connections, have a schedule or run down the key points of the show, things that you really can't miss and really bullet points for the production. You have to keep clear communication between yourself, the director, the camera op, the coordinators of the events and the talent. You wanna be on the same page. You don't want people to go rogue and not have an idea of what's gonna happen. I will say though, there are going to be instances where you have to improvise and that's just all part of being in this space. No one gets off easy. It's always kind of a jumble, but you know, that's where our powers really shine. That leads us to having backup plans, extra gear such as cables ready to go. You never know what's gonna happen. Sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes equipment fails. And the last thing you wanna do is be left up the creek without a paddle. So make sure you have all that stuff ready to go, have multiples and you won't run into any problems. Have all your streaming assets organized and ready to use. You don't wanna be searching for things last minute or during production. You wanna be as streamlined and as efficient as possible. And it reduces so many headaches when everything's already laid out, ready to go. You wanna record the stream on your end for a high quality archival copy or for copies that you wanna edit later on to be posted on different social media channels or to be reused in some highlight later on down the line. Lastly, you wanna make sure that you have fun and have a good attitude. I know it seems cliche, but live streaming can be incredibly stressful and demanding. And the last thing you wanna do on set is be a really bad attitude person. No one wants to work with that. It doesn't get anything done during the production. In my experience, most people get upset and angry when they're not prepared for things to go wrong. And if you are just ready from the get-go, you can reduce a lot of that stress. So imagine now it's production time. This is a small checklist for what a technical director, director, the person who's operating the production or taking charge of the production is going to be doing. They're gonna go over the show schedule, test the connections to the switcher or the computer, check the assets, make sure that they have every graphic that they need for the show ready to go and input it into their streaming software or the switching software. They're gonna check the internet connection to make sure they have proper speeds to make sure that it's gonna be reliable during the production and they're not gonna drop and have some kind of interruption go on. They're gonna test the stream. They're gonna run comp checks on their walkie talkies or they're gonna organize their team in some fashion to make sure they all know what's gonna happen before the show starts. Gonna make sure that their crew is in position and ready to go when you say action. The next bullet point is pretty important because it's something a lot of people, including myself, forget to do as production approaches. It can be really hectic. There can be a lot of adrenaline pumping and there's just all kinds of anxiety. So it's very important to just breathe, take a second to step back and prepare yourself for the awesomeness that's about to go down. The last step is just go. There's no more holdups. You're ready for this. It's time to cut the show. So let's walk through a little bit of troubleshooting. Starting with the camera, if you're not having any camera signal seen in the switcher or your computer, you can try checking the in and output connections such as your HDMI or SDI, make sure they're not loose, make sure the white balance ISO and aperture are correct. And if all else fails, try an external monitor to go between the camera and the switcher or laptop and see if we're getting connection there. 
if something's going wrong, then it's usually something having to do with the connections or the settings of the camera itself. Now, I'm not an audio expert, but I just know that you should match your audio channels and make sure that there's no obstructions uh, such as walls that you're going through if you're using any wireless audio system. Make sure it's clean line of sight and you have proper connections in between everything. Now, basically for switcher, make sure that you match your FPS to the camera and make sure that you are also matching every setting between your switcher or streaming software and your output destination. Again, going with the stream, make sure your stream keys and URLs are all in check and make sure that your internet strength is reliable and stable for you to continue production. So now that we've covered most of the basics, let's go ahead and get to the really fun stuff. Setting up our own one camera production. Let's go ahead and get to it. Welcome everyone. This is our setup for our simple live stream production. I just want to walk you guys through what I did to make sure that your production is as seamless as possible with as little hiccups as possible. Now let's go ahead and get to it. So one of the first things you want to do when you get to your production space is have a look at where your shoot's going to actually happen, where your subjects are going to be, and where you're then going to set up afterwards. So in this case, we have our talent sitting up front and our camera here in front of them directly in the middle to be able to capture both of them at the same time. And right behind that, we have our little video village, which is a pretty simple setup that we'll get to in a moment. But once you have everything kind of set up, you can then go ahead and work on your placement for your different equipment that you're going to need to make sure that this production is going to actually happen. Next thing up is our video village. This is where you kind of dump out everything that you need and that you brought for your production. Um, you can use a table. We have this little cart here in the studio. So so what I'm using today. Uh, but here I have my laptop. I have my tech bag open that you guys saw before. And everything kind of linked up together to make sure that it's ready to go and I'm as efficient as possible. Everything's already kind of laid out and ready to go. Down here below our video village, we have our power strip, which has our extension cord here as well that we plugged into our laptop, our camera, and a light source that we're gonna be using. Here we have our camera as a lens. We have a 24 to 72.8. I really like this lens because of how versatile it is. It's just such a great lens all around. Here we have FP. This is a camera that I really enjoy using because of the outputs that it has. It makes it so easy to use for live streaming. On the first input here, we have our USB-C cable. This is going to be our backup power if the battery were for some reason to fail or discharge. So I really like that we can use a USB-C cable to charge it super quick and efficiently and I don't have to worry about it dying on me in the middle of a stream. Down below here, we have a micro HDMI adapter that we saw earlier connected to a full size HDMI cable going into our laptop for the streaming capture. Down below here, this red cable is the Rode Mic Go. This is gonna be our little lav kit. Uh, we're gonna have one microphone on each of our talents and it's gonna come straight to this so I can record both audio from them and have it into the camera which then goes transmits to the laptop itself. So pretty simple setup, really efficient, super easy to, to use. So something I also recommend is having some gaff tape or some Velcro straps to tie up any loose cables coming from the camera and making sure that these things are nice and tight and snug and aren't gonna be pulled off. It just helps keep things more secure and tidy overall. So a nifty little thing that I like to use for simple productions if i'm only going to be using one camera like the sigma fp is going from the micro hdmi adapter to the from the camera to the hdmi cable to this elgato cam link and what this does is transform the hdmi signal coming from the camera into something that i can plug in with my usb a and then go straight into my laptop so it makes it super easy and super simple i don't need a switcher or anything to go from the camera to my laptop. I can also use the Sigma FP kind of like webcam and use the USB-C cable into my laptop as another form of an input. But I like using the USB-C as a power source instead of a, a video out. So I just like using the regular HDMI to this cam link to my laptop and it makes things so easy. I can stream at full 1080p and it works a treat. So another important tip 
here we have our extension cable that we ran from the wall. Now it is coming straight from the wall across the scene up to our video village. Um, one of the most important things for me and for others um, in your production as a whole is to make sure that everything that's going to be crossing a walkway is secured. So using gaff tape like this to tape up and make sure that your cables are taut and not going to be tripped over is important. The last thing you want is for someone to walk through, trip, hurt themselves, and, you know, that is a terrible thing. Then aside from that, also having them pull on this cable, potentially damaging any of your equipment or causing some sort of connection that might ruin the stream as well. Those are two important things to consider and you, the last things that you want. So for your safety, for other safety, and for your stream safety, make sure to tape down and secure every cable that is going to be walked through, walked by, just anything to secure yourselves. Yeah, make sure that everyone safety is first for sure. As soon as talent arrives, I make sure that they're stationed properly. They know what they're doing, what the schedule is, and what's going to be happening during the production. I also mic them up or adjust their microphones if needed. Uh, but aside from that, they're pretty much ready to go. They're placed, cameras checked on positioning, and then we're ready to go back and start production. So now that I have everything set up, everything laid out as I want it to, the next step is to go into my laptop. The first thing I do when I'm on my computer is run a speed test. Now this checks the internet speed, upload and download so that I know that I'm going to have reliable internet throughout the stream. I use either Oompla or you can just type in speed test into your Google browser and something will come up. So I'll just hit run and it will tell me if I am fast enough and I have consistent speeds. Everything's looking good. We have some pretty reliable, really strong speeds and we are ready to go ahead and continue the process. Currently we're using OBS and I already have a few things in here like my graphics, my titles, um, and my camera setup. I also go to my streaming platform and grab the URL, the stream key, and then input that back into OBS so that I can make sure that they are both connected and ready to go. Lastly, I'll go into my project folder and take a look at all the folders and see if I have everything that I need for the production. I'll go into my graphics folder and make sure that all the assets are prepared. I have my introduction graphic, I have my lower thirds, I have one of my Sigma upper logos, and whatever other graphic that I might need for the production is all set to go. Before I say action, I go ahead and check the connection between my streaming software and the platform that I'm going to be using. In this case, it's YouTube. I host an unlisted private stream and I send a signal from OBS to YouTube. If I can see it and I know they're communicating, I'm ready to proceed with the actual live production. Once I've double checked everything, there's nothing else to do except start the stream. That's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are ready to go out and start your live stream production journeys. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I'm really excited to have been a part of the Road to Salt webinar series. We hope to see you guys soon. We hope to have a lot more conversations with all of you in the near future. And who knows, maybe a part two, an intermediate course to live streaming and broadcasting. Now that's it for us today. I am Frank Ramirez of Sigma Corporation of America. We'll see you guys in another video. Bye-bye. incredible holy cow i feel like he just like got on a motor scooter and went through all of that info um i was taking notes the whole time and blown away i mean just uh i feel like what he was sharing some of you in the chat may be able to affirm this but it was really like how do you get live stream meets mobile studio i mean we were talking here in the studio uh listening to that frank and just kind of coming up with this sort of thought of like, wow, some of this is not only like almost an exact representation of how we're doing this from the Salt Studio, uh, but it's a great thing to be able to like send with a pastor or something like that on a missions trip, because I think you're setting up something that's very portable in a lot of these examples. So uh, bravo, bravo. Uh, go ahead and keep putting questions in the um, chat. Uh, we've got a ton lo locked in here, but I wanna bring Frank back if we can. Um, and invite him onto the stage so that we do this split screen thing that we're um, setting up. He's coming in right now.
And uh, hey, Frank, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Nice to see, nice to see you again. <laughs> The best part about what you broke down was I feel like there is so much information. I turned to the team and I was like, okay, I need to have information here about how we can replay this because I don't know if anyone else is sitting here thinking about this, but like I need the replay right now. So I can tell you this while we're waiting uh, to get him in my ear, you uh, will be able to get an email tomorrow morning. If you've signed up for this, you'll get the replay. So if you wanted to go back through and watch the best tips, uh, on kind of how do you prevent hiccups or the tech directors, uh, technical directors uh, checklist, we'll be able to do that. So I hear you already, Frank. So <laughs> thanks for that. That is incredible. Oh, no problem. It's my pleasure. And I think this goes back to uh, what I said in the, in the, in uh, earlier is just having a uh, safe copy on your end, you know, to post and reshare. And that's really important to keep the engagement up after the live stream is over. So like, kudos to you guys to, <laughs> Having that, having that already in the back pocket, you guys are doing an amazing job already. Yeah. Now I will say this, just for those watching at home, I, um, you called me out. Uh, our team here, you, you had this whole comment about make sure that you know there's not cables that like are in the middle of like your video village or something that someone can trip over. And so uh, I actually took a photo right when you said that. I apologized. I posted it on Instagram. And so if you're watching uh, this and you want to see that, you can see kind of a little bit behind the scenes of like our studio, but you can go to our Instagram salt underscore community and you can see that in our most recent story. So we totally broke one of your rules um, oh, because no. our outlet is literally in the middle of our studio, but nobody tripped yet. So uh, that's a good. good thing. All right, let's, let's fly through this. Um, the first thing I know Greg asked a question. It was one of the first questions I had when you were going through all your lenses, but Greg asked a question down here. Um, about how do we know the distance that we need to have from our subject or from the stage to our cameras? Do you guys have, I mean, obviously the lens is going to change sort of how close a subject is. Does Sigma, or do you know of a tool out there that you can sort of calculate that distance and or see how close the framing is of a subject? You know, um, there's a lot of examples like of what like lens, different lenses can do. Um, and there's like so many different places you can see them, but I don't have like a specific tool in mind. But uh, I think ultimately it comes down to like you being in the space itself and kind of like already, again, going back to uh, being prepared, knowing your equipment and what that's capable of and like going into the space, seeing how far you can be, because you also don't want to be in the middle of the room and having people notice you while they should be paying attention to what's going up on stage. You want to be as back as you can be. Um, so having something like a telephoto lens, like a 70 to 200 or something in that range um, to get close ups and even get a little bit further back to get the uh, the full stage when you're zoomed out is pretty important. Um, but yeah, it's, you don't really know, you can try to calculate it, but at the end of the day, being there and then having your eyes on where your, your location is and what you're gonna be doing is the most important part. Yeah, so it's almost like a test and, and tweak as you kind of go along. Right, right, and like in my experience, I. The work that I've done has never been in a specific, like one location reoccurring. So that's the benefit for a lot of you possibly in being in the house of worship where you're gonna be in a single, single location. We were traveling across the country. We were setting up full on production studios in the locations that we were at and they were never the same. Um, so we'd have, to ca we'd have to do that all the day of a, a, like a live production. So whereas you guys have the benefit of time, we don't usually have that, um, but so, I think just being versatile and being able to adapt is, is really key. Cool. Well, let's fly through some of these. Michael asked a great question about how do we get stream quality better? I mean, he was using OBS, which is great that in your uh, teaching there, you talked about OBS, but mm -hmm. that it looks better in OBS than it does on YouTube. Can you speak a little bit into how we increase that quality? So I think the two main factors in that are going to be one, your internet speed. If you have a strong internet speed, you can rel you can rely on that, and and that is a good support system of having a higher quality stream. Um, in addition to that high, uh, in addition to the internet stream itself or the internet speeds, uh, it's having the ability to have a higher bit rate. Uh, right, bit rate equals like better resolution. If you if you exported a video in a lower bit rate, you wouldn't get the same quality as you would see when you're editing something. Uh, and the same thing goes when you're live streaming. If you don't have a high enough bit rate while you're streaming, the quality, even though you might have a really great camera and, and then in your switcher, it might look great. The end product isn't going to show that result. It's going to be a lot, uh, a lot more degraded. So I think those are the two main yeah. things to focus on. Make sure that you have a really yeah, strong internet signal. 
I know a quick benchmark, at least for YouTube, is if you're trying to do 1080p stream, you need to set OBS to try and prioritize out at that 6,000 kilobits per second. So Correct. Yeah. Uh, if, if that may be a setting in there. A yeah. um, couple other questions uh, Isaiah is asking here. Was this live stream via OBS? It's actually <laughs> not. We're actually using vMix, uh, which is very similar to OBS. Yeah. It's almost the same sort of concepts. It's just got a little bit more features that allow us to sort of keep that together. Talk about some of the other options that are out there aside from just OBS, vMix, all that. Well, like actually, uh, I have a little spreadsheet of like different little resources and gear that I uh, will have, I think, Caitlin uh, put in the chat or later on down the line. But one, the two main ones that I was recommending was OBS and vMix because I've used vMix quite a lot and extensively. Uh, and it's such a great resource uh, for the amount, like for what you can really get out of that software, it's incredible. It's not the price that it comes in, so useful. Um, but there's some other ones out there, uh, depending on your price range. Blackmagic Design with their ATEM, ATEM switchers has its own broadcasting software that's really nice. So with the, if you buy like a, a Blackmagic switcher, which is really nice, portable, very useful and very economical solution, it also comes with that streaming software. Um, so that's just a whole seamless package if you just want to start out um, and even scale that up to have, I think, up to three or four cameras into that switcher, which is great. Um, that's a really great resource. And then you get up to like something like the new, the, um, the new Tech TriCaster. Those things are incredible machines, super well built, and they have incredible inputs and outputs. Um, but that also is a whole streaming solution in and of itself. So if you have one of those, yeah, so you've obviously got like the awesome. software, like OBS yeah. Vmix, and then you have like hardware solutions Correct. Uh, to kind of go from there. So I want to yeah. go back. You, you mentioned this resource guide. And so uh, everybody watching, um, there is a resource that we just dropped in the handouts tab uh, of Demio. And click that. Download that. What you're going to see is it's going to have all the details. I mean, when he was going through his bag, when he was going through all that stuff, it's all mm -hmm. in that document. And so if you're sitting there going, Wait, I missed some of that, if, and you're not going to be able to watch the replay. Go at least download that um, PDF that we just put in there. That's great. All right, real quick, while we're talking switchers, I know someone asked a question on here. I don't know who it is because it's not on my screen right now, but the question about how do you mix the differences between like an iMag switch, which would be in the room, right? The people in the room see one feed, but right. online or stream sees another. Now, I know we need a, a switcher capability that does that with two MEs or something like that. Can you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about I know OBS doesn't really have that feature built in, at least. Right. Um, I think, yeah, that's that's really dependent. Uh, it's a tough question because um, most of the times when I when I do that kind of stuff and I want to have a separate iMag for internal stuff, it's usually kind of handled by the switcher itself. Um, so you, with OBS, you would be really limited to what you can what you could use. Um, something like HM Switcher has some has some modifications that you could use through it and adjust the settings that way. But for the most part, it is really kind of hard. I don't know. To be honest, that's a really good question. That's something I actually have to look up too. So, you know, I don't know everything, but it's, but you guys are giving me something to think about, which is great. I know that for us and the situations that we're in, uh, you either need like a physical two ME switcher where one ME would be going right. to the output, one would go to the, the room. But mm -hmm. another easy quote unquote hack would be to use a Blackmagic Atom switcher or a Panasonic mm. HS50 or something for the room, take the output of that into OBS and have a dedicated sort of studio camera, either view or angle, that if you wanted to kind of go away from like the iMag cut to either mm. a graphic or uh, another camera, you right. could easily sort of cheaply uh, build a different build out there. All right, let's knock out a couple more of these. John Mark asked, does the Sigma camera have an EF lens mount? First off, so, I think everybody was blown away that Sigma had a camera, so that was kind of... Yeah, so that's that's true. Not many people do know that we do make cameras. We have two cameras in our lineup at the moment. The FPL. The FP is a more video-centric camera. It has 24 megapixels, like I mentioned. Um, it's great for, for all kinds of different stuff, so it's a very versatile camera. The F FPL is a more photo-centric camera. That one has 61 megapixels. Uh, really astounding quality. It's what I carry in my bag, like when I'm going out to shoot with my family or I'm going to go on an adventure. That's what I take with me. Uh, but for video production work, I use the FP. Um, it does not have an EF mount. It has our own proprietary L mount that we share with uh, Leica and Panasonic and now DJI. So in that in that space, we are known as the L mount alliance. Uh, we we have we share our lens mount with a couple different manufacturers. Um, but 
we, we do have the ability to have an EF mount adapter to the L mount, and that is, I think, the MC21 or 31. And you can, and those will work pretty much flawlessly with, if you have a Sigma lens that's EF mount, you can mount onto the Sigma FP, um, but then you could also mount other Canon lenses to the Sigma FP with that adapter. I love that. Gregory asked the question uh, earlier on about um, the pacing of how often you change cameras. Mm -hmm. I know for us, we're kind of like follow the pace of whatever's happening, like as the pastor yeah. starts moving or the subject. But in, in the studio environment you showed, like if we were going to do, you know, a live stream remotely, talk about mm -hmm. that. How do you know the pacing of that? I think a general rule of thumb, and actually one of the people uh, commented down here is, uh, our attention span, especially nowadays, is kind of shrinking. Um, so generally, I like to keep in between like five to ten seconds. But again, going into the pacing of what of what's going on. If there's like someone talking, you really and it's very important or very heartfelt or it's just really it's really um, just very serious. You kind of keep on those a little longer. But you can also mix that along with camera movement. If you have uh, like I think was also mentioned in the comments. So you guys are very very knowledgeable. Great great audience today. Um, but yeah, like things with how the content that's being produced, like how that tempo is going, generally trying to keep between five to 10 seconds and then also playing around with camera movement um, is also really important. And that is, um, you can play around with that to, to judge for yourself. Cool. I think we've only got time for one more question. And so there's a lot okay. of questions in here. We'll get to in just a second. But the question I want to ask is, uh, Jackie asked, what's the best way to really test a live stream? I mean, you kind of talked about that right at the end of of your mm -hmm. teaching bit where you're kind of doing a test stream, but can you maybe break that down a little bit more for someone trying to test before we actually transmit in a real live stream setting? Right. So I can, I, yeah, it kind of briefly went over it. So before I go into like when that, in, in that example, I was streaming to YouTube before I went to the main link for what, where I was going to be broadcasting, I made a separate unlisted video uh, live stream that I would send that I would send it to. So it's unlisted, it's private, so no one else aside from myself or anybody who wants to share a link to can see it. And that just lets me know that something is transmitting from my switcher to that outlet. Um, and it's a very simple way of testing it, but it's a pretty efficient and reliable way um, because if you are seeing it, then there's no reason why you shouldn't then stream to your, de your preferred destination, the actual link you're then gonna be streaming to. Um, there's other ways in Facebook and Facebook, you have the ability to do it without even going live in the first place, uh, which is really great. Uh, they they send uh, stream health data that you can then see and you can really monitor that in that in that sense. Um, so that's, those are like the two main ways that I really test my streams. I love that. And obviously for the churches, if you're doing like a worship rehearsal mm -hmm. uh, and you're wanting to just kind of work out all the kinks, I know the, the church that I went to for a long time, they actually were doing it during rehearsals. They brought in volunteers, they were cutting mm -hmm. cameras, and that was not just a rehearsal for the band, but it was a rehearsal for the tech team. And they would share that with their communications or media team, staff, or pastors and sort of their family so that they could use that as their test and get feedback back before they ever went live. Um, True. They were actually able to basically do it without it uh, being real. Yeah, Frank, no, thank you so much for all of this. This is incredible. I, I have to imagine, first off, there's a bunch of questions here. I'd love to try and get to you. But if someone has a question specifically for you, how in the world can they get in touch with you, stay connected with you, or find you on social media? Great. I'm really easy to get to, in contact with. You can reach me on my email at framirez at sigmaphoto.com. You can also go to our website, uh, sigmaphoto.com or check us out on Instagram at Sigma Photo, at Sigma Photo and at Sigma Cine. And we're pretty responsive with everything. And I'm very much open to like talking to you guys for, uh, further. So feel free to send me an email. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to talk to you guys with, and help you guys out with whatever you need. I love it. Well, Frank, thank you for your time today. I'm so grateful that Hunt's photo video connected us and the content you shared. And like I said, if you're watching this, uh, you're going to get an email tomorrow for the replay. So if you miss something or want to go back and watch something, you'll get a chance to do that. But thank you, Frank. Really, really appreciate that. And just it's as a heavy. reminder, I would, I would highly encourage you guys to go make sure you download that bonus resource with all the links that he had. Um, I think it's going to be a great resource there. As um, we sort of come to wrap up this uh, live stream, I uh, want to just make one simple reminder that SALT Conference 2022 is coming up. Just a couple of seconds here to kind of let you know, 
it is going to be an incredible experience. And if you've never been before, I want to seriously compel you to consider buying a ticket. Go try and convince your boss, go get your pastor on board, tell your elders like, hey, this will be well worth it because I just want to personally guarantee it will not only be worth your money, it'll be worth your time. And both those things I think are probably more sacred today in ministry post COVID than ever. But we hear it from countless attendees year after year that they come and they're either on the edge of burnout and God met them and clarified their vision and re-energized them for ministry back in the local church with creativity and technology, or they come back and they find that process, that technique, that technology tip that they needed to sort of break through whatever the hurdles they were facing. And it was salt and the conversations with people like Frank and Noah and all these other speakers and leaders and vendors that are going to be there that have insights they're wanting to give you to help you become better or It's people who find their community. It's people like you all who have found their connections. They found others who have helped them stir along. I think the greatest opportunity we have in the church to break down isolation and the loneliness factor that happens in church technology is for the church to begin to be the church for the church and to get out of the way and let a community of people come together. That's why we call ourselves Salt Community. And we just hope that you would come. You can go to saltcommunity.com slash 2022 for all the details, and you can check all that out. And the coolest part is we just announced a new speaker for our lineup. And so uh, hopefully we'll put up a couple of them, but we just added Crowder to the mix. So if you've been inspired by his music, I think anyone who has listened to him for a little while would know he is a genius when it comes to music and creativity. I mean, he's constantly reinventing himself, reinventing his craft, and he has a huge heart for not only worship, at the local church. And so I can't wait for us to have a conversation with him uh, about what that looks like moving into 2022. So if you haven't signed up, make sure you do that. You can see the rest of those speakers online. It'll be in Nashville, Tennessee. And those speakers were mostly main session. We even talked about the 50 plus workshops that you'll get. So there is, it is jam packed three days of value. If there's anything we can answer, make sure that you email us information at saltcommunity.com. We'd be uh, happy to help do that. Lastly, August 2nd is our next webinar. It is like right around the corner. So you'll get an email about that uh, coming up shortly, but we would love for you to be there. Carl Barnhill, a longtime friend of the SALT community, is going to be sharing a whole lot of insights about how do you go through revisions? How do you take critiques? How do you take edits from your leadership or your pastor without losing your soul, right? Because we put ourselves into these projects, these videos, whatever it is we're making. You do not want to miss that. It is free as well. Make sure that you sign up so that you get all these alerts and you get to be a part of that. Do not want you to miss that August 2nd. Again, thanks for being here. I am so grateful that you have joined us for the Road to Salt, and I can't wait to see you next time. See you guys.